Welcome, everybody, to this week's Menlo Midweek Podcast. My name is Mark. We have Aisha on, one of our awesome volunteer hosts, as well as Javon Washington, who, if you've been at Menlo for a while, came and guest spoke with us last year and has returned to us this time as one of our executive pastors. So he's been on the team now for about two and a half months or so. So we're gonna get to know him a little bit better, chat about Halloween, as well as dive into the first week of our For the Bay series. And thank you so much to those who have continually said yes to the call that God has on your life to help us do what we do here. We cannot do the things that we do without you volunteering your time with us, whether that's serving like Aisha is right now during the week with this Menlo Midweek podcast, helping record or edit midweek videos, doing stuff for our social media team, or helping out on the weekends on campus, in person, or online. So thank you so much for all of your hard work and dedication there. If you want to help do what we do to bring life change to those in the Bay Area and beyond, we'd love to get you on the team. You text us at 650-600-0402. And now let's go ahead and jump into today's podcast. Well, welcome everybody to this week's Menlo Midweek Podcast. My name is Mark. We have Aisha with us today. And Javon is with us as well, who you may remember from, I don't know, a couple months ago when he was a guest speaker. Now he's back on our staff. I'm back like I never left. I know. Yes. It was in October of last year. Now Mm -hmm. I'm back. Dude, a year? Yeah, it's been a year. That's wild. Yeah. Yep. It's been a year. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah. It's real interesting how it all happened and um, I'm thankful to be here. But yeah, it's been a year, about a year. Okay. We are thankful to have you. We are. It's good to be here. Yeah. And we're going to get into that story in just a little bit, but this is coming out uh, either the night before or the night of Halloween. And so we had a little Halloween event over this past Sunday that we were just checking in on. Aisha, you're at Menlo Park. How was that? What were some costumes that you saw? What did you dress up as? So it was amazing, first of all. Mm -hmm. City of Menlo Park Mm -hmm. and Menlo Park Church put together something amazing. Shout out to y'all. Keep doing it. Like, shout out to the city of Mm -hmm. Menlo Park. I live in Palo Alto, and I want to call the mayor and say, dude, you're slacking. (laughs) It was was amazing. We We gave out lots of candy, really beautiful Mm. costumes, all the kids, all the adults. Mm -hmm. I mean, just rides and games. Mm -hmm. And it was just amazing. I came as a bossy, tired mom who loves Beyonce, but votes. Okay. So that was my (laughs) costume. There was a lot of glimmer and glitter (laughs) and shine. I saw it. It, The the boots with the, uh, what do they call it? The The boots with the tassels. Tassels, okay, yeah. And then the shiny hat. Yeah. That was the Beyonce effect. She was was boss status. Yeah. And then there was, I I voted on my, I had a sticker because I voted that morning, exercising civic duty. Yeah. And uh, just a tired mother taking two kids on <laughs> Halloween <laughs> at parties. What's kind of funny too is I feel like your outlets or your outfits that you wear to church normally aren't too far off from that because yeah. whenever I see you, they're pretty fabulous. I, you know, I tell people I'm intentional when I dress up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Javon, where were you at? Man, I went to Menlo Parks, uh, you know, uh, jump off with the city. Yeah, it was great. Like, you know, like you're saying, like to see the city and the church, Mm -hmm. which, you know, talking about even for the Bay stuff, like that's why you need to be partnered with your local city and Mm -hmm. city government uh, for an amazing event. So I went and my character was, uh, people were looking at me like, hey, where's your costume? I said, "Uh, my costume, I'm wearing it. It's called I'm Tired Black Dad. Uh, So, you know, I I was like, I'm tired. This is what I wear. And then my wife one time, uh, shout outs to you, Heather. uh, She had uh, me and the family go to uh, 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 some kind of event where everyone was dressed and we did like a whole family theme. And so like, my wife was like, uh, you know, we're all like the Aladdin family. Ah. Uh, my youngest was uh, Abu, Abu, and uh-huh. then I was Aladdin, but I did not want to be there. <laughs> so I was okay. standing holding a lamp, just looking like <laughs> like I had just died. And I'm just like, why am I here? And so I don't typically dress up during Halloween. Okay. Um, but one outfit, yeah. one costume that has caught my heart, though, yeah. has been the ones where they're inflatable and you stand in it yep, and it yep, looks yep, like yep. an yes. alien or something is trying yes. to snatch you. Those are so fun. I like those. That's so next cool. year, catch me outside. <laughs> How about that? Okay. That's what I'll be doing. But do you know, to what he just said, I think a lot of people in the Bay Area or in general community uh-huh. think church is churchy, mm. right? Yeah. 
But what I found over the weekend was we just mixed into the community. We mixed into mm-hmm. the culture. There was love. There was fun. Mm-hmm. You couldn't tell who was a member of the church and who wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I think that's great because when you are trying to tell everyone that they belong, I think what you're saying is believers look like non-believers, but you're loved. We mm-hmm. just want your kids to have fun. We want to bring community yeah. together. Yeah. And that's what I loved about this Halloween event. It was just a community event that everybody felt like they belonged. Yeah. No, I echo that. It was great. It was yeah. great. It was it was hard to it was hard to not have fun. Yeah. It was yeah. super fun. Yeah. So if someone is listening to this and they need a last minute costume, they could Amazon one of those inflatable costumes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Any recommendations from you? Amazon shiny mm-hmm. tassel silver boots. <laughs> I got okay. them on Amazon. Yeah. Everything's on Amazon, yeah. so yeah. get it together. Um, <laughs> some of my favorite costumes that I've seen that have been last minute and super great. I saw when I was living in Japan, Japanese people go super hard when it comes to dressing up. Okay. So we went out for Halloween one time, and there was um, a group of people that blew up different colored balloons and tied them to themselves, and they were grapes. Oh, oh my gosh. Interesting. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Okay. It was awesome. You really don't want to bump nope. up against no, any there surfaces. There so many people no. trying to pop those balloons. <laughs> exactly. No. And Chaotic. People, and people don't know, Japanese grapes are superior. Okay. Dude, like, their fruit they is really are. crazy. Yeah. Okay. I'm so jealous. Really I'm so jealous. Um, I just got back from a trip to Japan, a little baby moon. Mm, wow. And one of the nights that we were there, there was a guy that was selling fruit out of the back of his, you know, kind of truck or whatever at one of the, you know, markets that we were walking through and the grapes were expensive they were like 20 dollar grapes oh yeah but it was a clump that was about not bigger than like a handful of grapes but they were perfect and on the stem still okay. and we had to try them even though they were super expensive <laughs> my sister-in-law bought them um she was still trying to get used to the conversion of yen to usd so she thought it was two dollars <laughs> she missed the dollar she <laughs> missed the zero and then my brother was like what are you doing those are like 20 dollar grapes but we tried them they're Really good. Was it worth uh, the twenty bucks? I'll let you all decide. <laughs> well, we <laughs> can't decide. We didn't get none. We didn't get. Oh, we didn't, didn't bring any back. Them. They were delicious. Would you spend twenty dollars on grapes? Let us know in a comment. Yeah, all right. I mean, if they were delicious, okay. then I would do it. Okay, for so sure. The foodies will say yes, but then the people that are like, "I'll never spend twenty dollars on anything when I can get it for two dollars and it being slightly less." They might disagree. But well, you we'll should see. let those people know that Christmas yeah. is coming, and I wonder what kind of character they will be during Christmas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes. No Grinches allowed. No, yes. no Grinches. Oh. Well, um, Javon, one of the reasons why we, we ha- we're we having you on today is because you're actually teaching for us next weekend, yeah. which we're looking forward to yeah. as we're kicking off. We just kicked off our For the Bay series. You'll be mm-hmm. anchoring week two. We want to know a little bit more about you, about your story, where you grew up, and how you got here so that as we are partnering with you this weekend, we can better support you. Yeah, man. Well, uh, do I have to give you my blood type? <laughs> Uh, I'll let you decide. I'll let you decide. Uh, what the no. spirit leads. <laughs> the spirit does not lead you to be foolish. Uh, yeah, so I mean, for me, I grew up uh, in a single parent household. My mom, you know, she parented to the best of her ability. Three kids. You know, I'm a I'm the only boy and two two sisters. Are you the oldest? Um, I'm the oldest too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so my other sister would be like, "Well, I'm the most good looking." So I'm like, "Well, that's." <laughs> So they they have that you know I'll I'll Some take comedy this. runs in the family yeah I'll take the seconds <laughs> yeah. um, and so yeah I grew up you know in 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 a, a place where my mom just really did what she could to take care of us and loved us well um, I was actually born this is funny in Lancaster California no way. so Palmdale Lake L A area okay. yeah so then. I actually moved from California with my mom, um, and and we moved to Washington. And so my last name is Washington, so I'm Javon Washington, yeah. who was born in California. Um, and my dad's name, um, he's he's no longer on earth now. He he passed away about four or five years ago. Um, his name was George. George so, Washington. Yeah, so he was really? George Washington, okay. Javon Washington. And then uh, we moved to Washington. Okay. So it was just, there's a lot of Washington uh, going going down, you know, in in my narrative. Um, But, you know, was there and I lived in a lot of places in Washington. So all the way from, 
you know, elementary school to high school, like the longest I ever spent at a school was two years. Wow. So I never like had any kind of like stable space at mm. school because mm-hmm. my mom was just making sure that like, she needed to move, take care of the family, do what we needed to do. Um, and man, God bless my mom. And my mom, she is such an amazing woman. She is such a strong woman. She, um, you know, raised me in the church. Um, you know, she, she, she tried to help, you know, make sure I was, you know, going to follow the Lord. You know, I had my times of, dang, is he really going to be able to make it? But God was really <laughs> gracious and my mom was super sweet. Um, my mom, like, volunteered in church. Um, and my mom, like, she just was involved in certain things from her upbringing, her past that she really wanted to overcome. And so my mom really worked at that. You know, she dropped out of college, um, you know, when she was pregnant. Um, and then she ended up, you know, uh, going back to school. She got her, like, you know, her associate's degree from a commu- local community college um, in Seattle. Um, and then she, and that was like a two-year degree. Degree, and she had, mind you, she had three kids, three grown kids. Wow. Going to school. Wow. While she's, you know, this grown woman. And then she's taking care of these three growing kids as well as working full time. So my mom just got any kind of job. I mean, I remember my mom even working, you know, again, there's nothing wrong with working in like, you know, fast food. I mean, some people love it and that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had my experience and I did not love it. <laughs> um, so uh, McDonald's, that tagline, I'm loving it. I was not loving it. <laughs> so uh, my my mom, I remember her even working at KFC. Mm. She drove school buses. She did daycare. She's like anything that she could to take care of our family. So my mom did all those things. And then um, through throughout that whole kind of process, I really saw a lot of like my mom's work ethic and what it took to do things. And so she actually went back after she got her AA. She actually went back and got her um, um her bachelor's in psychology um, from uh, Seattle Pacific University, Mm -hmm. um, which is like a kind of a, you know, a private expensive Mm -hmm. college in, in, in Seattle where, you know, people like of the likes of like Brennan Manning has been there and, Mm -hmm. and done a lot of stuff. And so it was really, really cool, um, you know, place where she went. And so I would even go with my mom to school sometimes because my mom didn't have childcare. Um, and so she would have to bring, bring me. And I remember even being in college classes, answering questions, <laughs> like getting them right. And then people <laughs> looking at me like, what is wrong with this kid? I'm like, I have no life. I am in <laughs> class with my mom. So, um, you know, my mom just would, she went back to school and then ultimately she went back to uh, university of Washington and got her master's in um, wow. social work. Cool. And so wow. my, my mom, like when you hear like songs about people starting from the bottom and now they're here, like I yeah. think about my mom, my oh, mom, wow. my mom is really like an amazing woman who's just, she was, you know, living life, doing what she needed to do. Um, you know, obviously like trying to grow in mm-hmm. the Lord and overcome different things in her life. And, and she did. And so, you know, my mom raised, you know, three, three kids by, by herself. Um, but really a lot of that church community was a big piece of like mm. how I started to get more introduced into the life of the church. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, how like was able to actually have help. Like my mom was actually able to have help yeah. and people love on her and care for her, um, through the ups and the downs. Wow. Wow. And so how did that translate to you getting involved from that community aspect of being in the church to then working for and consulting for churches? Yeah, so it's crazy. So this is one of the craziest stories. So I grew up, um, you know, um, like a lot poorer than a lot of other people, you know, um, Section 8 housing, Mm. um, food stamps, you know, welfare. And so, you know, again, like there was just a lot of challenges when it comes to housing, food. I would have to go to warehouses and pick up clothes that they would have wow. ready for wow. kids. So, you know, it was hard to like afford to pay for like school clothes, backpacks, all those different things, mm-hmm. which is a complete flip to living here where I'm like, where's the list for the school kids? And they're like, uh, they don't have lists. Like they, mm-hmm. it's taken care of for them. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, where yes. was this at when mm-hmm. I was younger? Mm-hmm. And so... You know, like just growing up that way, you know, we really ha- were in, in need of a lot of things. And so my mom needed a help. We needed help. And there was this one year where we because we had always like there was organizations that we had tapped into that would help, you know, with like food or toys during Christmas or Thanksgiving. And there was this one year that um, like my mom really needed some help. And all those organizations like were like we're tapped out. We can't we can't do anything to help. So I was like, man, this is crazy. I was pretty sad, sad for my mom, sad for my family. And so I'm like in like middle, like middle school. Um, and so I remember going to church and <clears throat> the pastor was like 
preaching and he started talking about like giving. And again, now this is where people start tripping out and they're like, oh no, he talked about giving. So here you are, this, you know, lower income class family who your mom's struggling and the pastor's talking about money. But what the pastor said, hey, there's only one scripture that he says, like, test me in this and try me in this, which was about being a faithful, generous giver mm -hmm. and knowing that God's not after your money. He's not into your situation of he's not he's he doesn't clap in heaven of you being in a like a poverty situation like he, he's and he's not trying to rob you to to do something to you or to get something from you. Mm -hmm. What he really is after is your your heart, your affections. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, one of my friends, um, Nikum, Dr. Nikum Pond, uh, says, you know, your heart is your moral compass or your wa your wallet is your moral compass. Mm -hmm. So what, what you really value is what you really, spend you know, money. spend money on. And so a lot of times here in our culture and society and especially like my narrative, like that's what the value was, was, you know, security and safety, which, again, money's not bad. Um, it's a blessing to have those things. But we need security. We need safety. We we, we, we do need money. Um, but there are some people who become lovers of it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so it's not a sin to have money, but it's a sin for money to have you. Right. And yep. so like that preacher, he you know, the pastor, he, he was like, hey. God said, test me in this. And so I remember walking up there and I took, I took like a couple bucks. I remember it was like, I think it was like five bucks maybe. And then I put it in the offering and I said, God, if you're real, like if you're actually real, I need to see you show up and do something. Cause my mom is giving everything that she has and it's not enough for what she's doing. And so I need you to come through. Um, and so I remember going to the house, <clears throat> these organizations that couldn't, um, give to us They I got a phone call or our family got a phone call. This is the time they didn't have like cell phones were not popping like they used to. Yeah. So they called the house and um, they were like, hey, we have some extra things. We'll be able to give you wow. some. And I was like, nah, cool. that's crazy. Wow. So they come in um, and one of the things was, was when that scripture, he said, you know, um, try me and God will pour out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. Mm. And I was like, that's crazy, but we'll see. Mm. And so this call comes and these people come drop off, you know, these the this, this stuff for us. And I'm like, wow, no, that's a coincidence. You ever had those things where you're like, God, I need you to show up. Would you like? And he shows up. He shows up and you're yes. like, nah, that wasn't him. <laughs> so that's exactly what happened. And then that happened two more times wow. where two more other people brought baskets and stuff that they said that they weren't able to do before. Mm -hmm. So it went from nothing to something. And then in that moment, we had so much stuff that there wasn't room enough to put it in our cupboards because we had so much stuff. Wow. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, snap. Like, this is legit. I like this um, <laughs> You know, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And again, like being a young kid and having God show up like that, I was mm -hmm. like, okay. And so as I continued to go to church, like my church, <clears throat> they actually had a rule of when you could start serving in church. You had to be 13 to be an okay. usher. I was like, let me be an usher. Let me be an usher. <laughs> I was like, I want to serve God. I want to serve God. And I remember actually, I... Um, um, was sitting down and like to part of your question about like ministry mm -hmm. and was sitting down and I asked God, I said, God, what do you want me to do with my life? Um, and I did the Holy flip, um, you know, where you just open it up and, you know, yep. Bible roulette where you're like, wow, yep. yeah, what is where we land? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, of <laughs> course I, and of course my understanding of the scriptures was so, you know, terrible that I thought the scripture was about me. Um, it took me to the book of Isaiah that said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's mm. anointing me to preach, to preach liberty to the captives. Um, and so I was like, all right, God wants me to be a preacher. So um, I was like, okay, I had that scripture. And then it was but just, that scripture was about you. Yes, it was about me. And the crazy part about the crazy part about it was, is it, that didn't come to fruition until later. So when I read it, that scripture, you know, obviously, you know, talking about like Jesus coming mm. and that the spirit of the Lord is upon him. He's knowing me to preach. And I was like, whoa, that's I thought he was speaking to me, but I didn't know within like the grand narrative of scripture that it was talking about what Jesus came to do. But how my story fit into his big mm. story, I had no idea mm. about. So when I sat there and I was just like, oh, wow, what does this mean? I've never had this happen before. And some people would be like, oh, I don't know about this. I had this experience in that moment at church where it felt like I was whooshed uh -huh. out of my body into this feeling of forever. Wow. And it was like this impression upon me to you're called to pastoral ministry. You're called to plant church and you're called to serve me. 
I love like, it. That's the, wow. That was the call that I got, and that's how I got it when I got it. And then I remember that it was a feeling. The only thing I can explain is it was a, it was a whooshing feeling, and there was a feeling of forever, a feeling of eternity. Wow. I've never been able to experience that. I don't know what that was. And that I, was the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> yeah. When? How old were you? I was in middle school. So I was in middle school. What did you think, like, as that was, ha or like, as you're having that experience, are you tripping out? Are you like, <laughs> like what is happening? Like, look, I, I just know I read the scriptures before, and some crazy stuff be happening in the Bible. Uh -huh. So I was yeah. like, I got a grid for that. Okay. So, okay, um, and then especially too, like, I grew up in the black church, the traditional black church. So you know, just seeing God and hearing about what God did and how He showed up for you know, like people from the the diaspora and mm. people in the you know transatlantic slave trade, like mm. seeing how people again, like uh, there's a misconception that thinks that um, people who are black or or African or African American only came to Christ because of slavery when that actually wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. There is like some of the most earliest Bibles that we have are like from the continent of of Africa, mm -hmm. and so it just was it was it was a, it was crazy. So I had heard about how God would show up, you know, when people were getting beat or when people were trying to, you know, um, you know, make it and escape slavery, you know. So I I heard about those those things. I had read the Bible where I saw that God show up, but this was like the craziest time where wow. I experienced. It was it. a personal <clears throat> encounter. Yeah, it was a personal encounter, and then wow. the crazy stuff was happening like that. So I was like, "Yo, this ain't not normal. <laughs> uh, this is real, and it's." It was kind of, I expected it to be normative. I mean, it, there was even a time where I was, we were, uh, again, we, money low, mom doing everything she could. She was pretty sad. And we're outside doing yard work. I used to hate doing yard work. My mom would make me do yard work and mow the lawn. And I remember we were like, oh, man, we're thirsty. You know, I was like, yeah, we're thirsty. And then a Fruitopia truck goes by at that very moment. And out the Fruitopia truck, all this water, because uh, like Aquafina, Fruitopia, all of it just comes out off the back of the truck and falls into the street. Wow. And I'm just like, things like that were happening. I got, I got to have, after this, <laughs> mm -hmm. you got to pray for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need some things falling off a truck for me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and my friends, like, they would joke around, like, dude, Javon, you carry Jesus in your backpack. Nope. Because, like, stuff be happening, like, everywhere. And that's wow. been the crazy thing is that God has always, like, been there. Mm -hmm. And so whenever I've gone through crazy stuff, in ministry or crazy stuff in life as hard as it gets like i just had that experience i was just like yeah i know i it's not to say what's happening around me is not real it's to say what i know to be true mm. is a deeper weight yeah wow yeah and so you carry that spirit with you mm -hmm. into different organizations nonprofits, churches mm -hmm. that you work for how'd you find your way to menlo yeah so uh, the long story short is i've known phil for like 15 years okay. and so i've been married for 13 years this mm -hmm. year and phil actually even gave me like you know um some you know hey advice on like uh talking to, to my to my wife now wife and so <laughs> so i had known him for a long time one of my um good friends you know guy who were like this mentor friend relationship um he used to work for phil and so I would go visit him and hang out with him. Um, super great guy, man, just even in the professional workspace right now, just absolutely killing it. Great dad, great father, um, just loves loves people and, and loves his kids and his family. And um, so I would go and hang out with him. And then uh, they would say, hey, you want to like teach like our Wednesday, you know, mid, mid, mid week or something? I'm like, yeah. At that point in time, I was making a switch from, I was doing Christian rap music. So ah, I, yeah, so I made the, I was making the, that switch from Christian and rap music now when you were doing christian rap music they wouldn't pay you nothing so <laughs> you know number one you're already doing a, a type of music that's like can that be redeemed last thing mm -hmm. and so i'm trying to make that pivot and so people were like hey we can't pay you to come perform so what can you do and i was like well actually if you let me preach i'll do it for free i'll rap for free and then i'll preach and so I started like getting more preaching and teaching opportunities that way. Um, and then um, I went to a Calvary Chapel. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to Wayne Taylor, my spiritual father. Um, you know, there's this older like white dude in his like 60s, 70s, like discipling this young black kid, you know, like I call him Papa. He's still like to this day, like, like, a, like, a, like a dad to me. So wow. my spiritual father. And so he started like walking with me through like preaching and teaching. So when I was connected with Phil, I was able to actually be able to step into mm. doing something like that and mm. preach or teach. So I did like their winter retreat um, and then I would rap sometimes. And so that's <laughs> how I met Phil. <clears throat> and so we just kept talking throughout all those years. So even when he was in 
um, Colorado, um, all of those things. Like we just always stayed in contact. He's been a huge mentor for me and like talking through things as I'm navigating my way in the world of, you know, you know, um, of this space. And so the past three years, how I said it, like I preached last year here at Menlo, the past three years, all has been interacting around the same month and the same dates with Phil. Oh. Um, and so three years ago, I had like preached um, at the current church, the former church that he was at mm -hmm. for him. Um, and then that next year, he was, he was candidating for this role here. Mm -hmm. I preached for him at that church. And they had to tell everybody, hey, guys, just so you know, like, this is not the new pastor. He's not <laughs> candidating. Like, <laughs> don't, you know, like, people are like, hey, can you move here? And I'm like, hey, 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 don't get too thirsty too quick. <laughs> like, you know, when you're thirsty, bad things happen. So I preach, you know, that that um, Sunday uh, um, while he's here candidating. Mm -hmm. And then he he did take the role here. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, when, he, when he was here, I came and preached in a sermon series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was all, there was all dates were almost exactly kind of the same. Mm -hmm. And so after I came here last year, it would always been a desire to be able to work in ministry together, um, you know, with Phil. But, you know, of course, you're not ever trying to do something that's premature or think something that doesn't fit. It's one of the things that I love about Phil is that Phil, um, he, he doesn't like force stuff um, and he doesn't manipulate. He, he wants what God wants. And obviously, when you want what God wants, it's like one of those things where you're like, uh, again, I'm not saying I'm LeBron or nothing like that. It's like <laughs> saying if you're like LeBron and your favorite, you know, growing up was Michael Jordan and you're like, hey, can I, you know, we would, I would love to work with Michael Jordan one day. Like, that would be cool mm -hmm. to team up. But you can't you can't just request a trade because you because you want that. So that's kind of how it was. Or I was like, man, I would love to be able to, you know. Uh, work with Phil one day. He actually was trying to help me navigate, you know, getting a position at an, at another 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 church, giving me encouragement, and mm -hmm. giving me feedback. So mm -hmm. it just when I came here and I preached at the eight thirty service, at the eight thirty service, I go, oh my gosh, I think I want to be here. Ah, oh. I was like, mm -hmm. I, I want to be here. So I asked, uh, I told Phil, I said, hey man, I know we've never talked about all this stuff. I said, but if there's ever an opportunity. That fits um, my skill set with the, the the need and opportunity I'm in though. Holler at your boy. Um, so he was like, "Yeah, dude, no problem." Um, and then uh, I we, I went back home. Then um, and I knew about Menlo. I've had mm -hmm. friends that know about the history of Menlo and you know like the kind of church that it's been and who's been here and all the work that they've done and invested. And so when I got back, um, I was like, "Man, I can't wonder if they have any openings." So I just would go to the website, like not not even talking to Phil, not talking to anybody here. I just would go to the website and see if there's any openings. Oh, we have a job a website. Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, great. Uh, I'm I'm hiring right now. So if there's anything that you know, <laughs> <laughs> I am not yeah, looking yeah. for a job, <laughs> if but if I know anyone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I went to the website and. You know, I went to the website, started looking, and saw a uh, you know a role that I thought fit me well. Mm -hmm. And then, so I actually applied for it. Didn't talk to Phil about it or anything like that. Applied for it. Um, uh, and I interviewed. It was a campus pastor position. Mm -hmm. um, so I interviewed um, with Scott mm -hmm. and um, Matt, and uh, you know some of the campus pastors. And then um, didn't didn't get that that role. Um, and then um, I. Then I went to the next role, and the other role, uh, what was open was the pastor of spiritual formation. Mm -hmm. That role was open, so I applied for that role. And oh, you had, really wanted yeah, to come? Yeah, I really wanted to come. So I was like applying for roles. Mm -hmm. Again, I wasn't talking to Phil about like, hey, I'm applying for this role or whatever. Um, but then when it got to like the second, the second one, I was like, hey, man, I was like, uh, I'm applying for this, this role, um, you know, and ends up the role like. What happened, I didn't know the behind the scenes piece was, mm. yeah, so when you interviewed, it just was kind of clear that like those weren't going to be a good fit for you, which wouldn't be a good fit for us because we think that like, your skill set would set something different. Mm. So we're actually in this process of, you know, um, establishing our leadership team. And we actually think it would be a way better fit for you to actually lead part of that versus mm. being in those other roles. Mm. So that's how I ended up coming yeah. to Menlo. <clears throat> so I've been in pastoral ministry for the past you know, 19 plus years. Mm -hmm. So people who might know me and my relationship with Phil might be like, oh, was this like a, you know, your your friend is like, 
It's like, yeah. nah, it's like, if we, we've been friends for a long time, but no conversations of like, let's do something like that. Um, or even like my, my, my background. You know, it's, so sometimes it's kind of like when Paul, when people are like trying to check Paul. I'm not like Paul though. Like <laughs> you know, where he, he's like he's writing back those letters. You like, well, be like Paul if you when really, he came he, to Christ. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I need I need BC. Paul two point oh. No, I need I need a little bit of BC Paul, and I need a little bit of AD. Uh, but I think the part of it too is like making sure people understand. Like, no, like I, I've been in ministry for a long time. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not a it's not a pride. It's not a you know haughty arrogant things. Like this is what I do. This is what I've been called to do, and this is what I've been doing and this is and, the life and this is the this life this is your life and this just happens to be in this current season i get a chance to team up um with my friend mm -hmm. and then also have been developing great relationships and friendships with mm -hmm. other people so mm -hmm. it's been a huge blessing mm -hmm. to be here so that's how i ended up um at menlo wow we're so glad that you're here javon mm, thanks man and it is really exciting to see how you've already driven some of the um, how our look and feel, team culture, staff culture. And so I just want to say I'm super hopeful and, and thankful that you're here. Yeah, man. And a part of leading that is helping lead uh, not only our team, but our church in what our series looks like, what mm -hmm. it feels like, being able, able to teach as well, being a part of the teaching team. And so as we're moving into our For the Bay series that we just kicked off this past mm -hmm. weekend, let's. I'm curious for you, what does the series mean for you? Um, what are your hopes for for the Bay, and where do you hopes that it does not only within our church but in our local community? Yeah, we already heard a little bit about how Aisha tied that to looking like man. We don't even know when we open up campus events who's a part of Menlo yeah. and who's not, and I think that's a great piece of this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious to see from you as well. What are some other hopes? Yeah, I mean, my ultimate hope is that, <clears throat> like when we say the prayer you know, on earth as in heaven, mm -hmm. like we want to see that. Like, so right now what we're living in is, uh, uh, we're, we're living in a already not yet. Like there's this beautiful, mm -hmm. but hard tension of knowing that we want to, um, see everything that God has promised, that there'll be no more tears, that there'll be no more suffering. We'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, but part of that is actually going to work with dad, right? It's going to work with him and understanding mm -hmm. that like the Isaiah passage where I got at the very beginning, that latter half of it didn't make sense until it was like, oh, you're also like calling me to help bind up the poor and to help heal the poor and those who are disenfranchised and in the margins. And so, you know, um, one of my <laughs> friends, Doug Logan, he said, the whole earth is the hood compared to the glory of God. Mm, and right. I was like, wow. <laughs> I was I like, okay. yo, I was like, that's, mm. that's a deep and that's crazy statement, you know, but uh, oftentimes in Christianity, the conversation is about how do we escape earth to get to heaven right. mm -hmm. versus understanding like the biblical like imagery and what the promise is, is mm -hmm. that heaven would actually come down yeah. and that earth is not, um, it's not a, a cast to the side. Mm -hmm. It's a, Hey, we are called as image bearers to be divine gardeners, mm -hmm. to cultivate it so that it can flourish mm -hmm. and that it can display God's beauty. So that means, um, work life, mm -hmm. like work is not a product of the curse work becomes harder because of the fall. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, we were created to do those things. And that's what God is saying, hey, partner with me in what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So if the whole understanding, if the whole telos and narrative around the, the scripture is for one day God to reconcile and bring all things to himself, to make all things right, mm -hmm. you know, or like C.S. Lewis puts in his imagery in Chronicles of Narnia, that the, the 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 white witch or the ice queen had you know put this frozenness over Narnia, mm -hmm. um, and that um, it, it was it was always cold but never Christmas. Mm -hmm. That the 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 ice would need to start melting away. Yeah. So that's part of what we get to do. We get to be part of the ice melting away. Mm -hmm. We get to be part of bringing Christmas mm -hmm. to a land that's always cold. Mm -hmm. And so I want for the for the Bay stuff for everybody to be able to say, hey, you know what? People know us as followers of Jesus a lot of times for what we're against, but not really what we're for. Mm -hmm. So how do we say, yeah, so how do we say, hey, here's what we're really for. We're for you. Like, we love you for who you are. You can belong before you can believe. And when you connect with God, you leave forever changed. Yeah. And it's a process. Yeah. So we want people to be able to step in and say, wherever I'm at in that faith journey, whether they're, you know, um, a seeker, where they're a skeptic mm -hmm. or where they're a, a prodigal, there's someone who's walked away from God. And now they're like, I'm trying to come back. You know, this is the spot. 
And so what we want to do, though, is make sure we connect that theological understanding of God renewing and reshaping all things to the heart and to the human experience. And so they just can't be disconnected. Our, our, ortho, our orthodoxy and our orthopraxy have to be together. So meaning our right thinking or understanding of Scripture and the doing of Scripture are not to be disconnected. They're to be together. And that was one of the blessings of growing up in the black church. Like that was never a question. Like it wasn't like oh, we believe in Jesus, but don't help those people. It was like, mm. we believe in Jesus and God calls us to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it, so it wasn't like, it was never disconnected. And what I found was often in my newer experiences within the, the, the hallways of evangelicalism was that there was a disconnect between right thinking and right doing. I think also just to your point and to the sermon that Phil gave, we spend... Right now, the culture is very focused on what Christians don't like and what Christians are condemning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, what I loved about what Phil talked about in For the Bay series is, well, how about we flip it and think about love? Mm -hmm. Let's start with love being just the primary beginning discussion. And I think that's something that I want to see us do more and I see really as a centerpiece of this series is just being in the community and being a reflection of light and love is what I saw at this Halloween event. And I think mm -hmm. that for me as a lay person is what I see as the most important part of this series mm -hmm. is just reflecting yeah. love in our community, welcoming people, right? Because first people need to feel kind of warm and see that light yeah. mm -hmm. and be attracted to the light. Mm -hmm. And then have the conversation and discover, oh, wait, I see where the light is emanating from. I see where you are getting this joy from or mm -hmm. where you are reflecting this love from. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that Christians do not like or do not condone, but there's everything in the Bible. And this is what Phil talked about. Mm -hmm. The basic call is that we have to love each other, mm -hmm. right? And we have to love mm -hmm. each other as Christ loved the church, yeah. right? And so I think for me at least as a lay person, that is the core of this series. Yeah. And it's also something, you know, that Phil also said that got me thinking is just being in conflict with people sometimes, yeah. which, you know, unfortunately that happens to many of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. His point about we are not fighting you know, matters yes. of the flesh, yes. yep. right? And so it yep. just transforms. Yeah, the you're not the fighting person. the person, yep. you're fighting this spirit behind mm -hmm. them or mm -hmm. this principality behind mm -hmm. them. And it really takes you from us fighting and having conflict mm -hmm. with one another to really being able to say, Mark, I love you. Mm -hmm. There are things that are happening in our relationship mm -hmm. that are outside of you, but fundamentally, I love you. And for me, that was uh, really transformational when mm -hmm. Phil talked mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And how do I show that in practice? Yeah with just even my neighbor in yeah. the community, the guy that sells coffee at the Starbucks. Like, how do I communicate this light and this love to him? Mm -hmm. That's good. I love that. I mean, and it's like, like Ecclesiastes talks about like, don't, don't assume that a person is poor because they did something wrong. It could be that someone um, did something wrong to them and they were a victim of injustice. Yeah. Um, and so when you look at that whole piece and even applying that, that same part of that is if you don't understand the back, the backdrop and the context, you will mistakenly and not accurately assess. Yeah. So if we're walking around looking at each other as our enemy, when we don't have the backdrop that, that as the scriptures will call the God of this world, the principalities, like the demonic spirits, the, the evil spirits um, that are around that God, you know, defeats and shows that Jesus is, is the victor. Um, the whole biblical imagery of all of those things, when you see Jesus casting out demons, when you see Jesus bringing people back to life, like all of these things are part of that appetizer or the, the divine appetizer and the, the, the foretelling of the kingdom, the kingdom being come. But if you don't understand that there's like forces at play, yeah. then you'll start to be playing at this level mm -hmm. when you actually need to be playing at that level. Mm -hmm. And so when we're looking at politics, when we're looking at a person's preference on music style or whatever, mm -hmm. we're sitting there like getting sideways or talking in cursive because we're like trying to get at somebody. We don't even understand like the same, there's a spirit going on. And also what spirit 
are you operating in? Mm. Are you operating in that spirit? And I think C.S. Lewis taps deeply into that in the screw tape letters, which yeah. is one of my favorite things. C.S. Lewis is like my favorite theologian. Yeah. Um, him and Frederick Douglass, those are my top two theologians. <laughs> um, but I, I think to to that point, it's like, that, that love, we want people to know, like, mm-hmm. here's, here is what we are doing. Yeah. Here's what we're about. Here's how much Jesus loves us. Yeah. yeah. I love that, too, because there's a piece in there where we talked a little bit about the life of the mind in the last series a bit, where it was, you know, how can we have this deep-rooted, sometimes in a very strong and healthy way of approaching the Bible um, and Scripture um, through knowledge and through mm-hmm. interacting with um really diving in deep to the word study, but how does that translate to what we actually do and how do we live that out? And so if we approach the problems of today's world in that same way, where we can see and recognize, man, there's some evil that's happening here, but what is driving that? And Mm -hmm. how can we address those issues versus Mm -hmm. just this, like what's on the surface? Mm -hmm. And so I'm hopeful too that in this series, we'll be able to acknowledge and identify some of the ways in which we can directly help our community right around us, but also dig into, man, what are the things that are causing this? Yeah. And where are the ways that we can partner with our local um, government, with local resource um, nonprofits? How can we help get really dig into what's driving a lot of this negativity that we see? And so I'm excited because, man, this is like coming out of this last series, we we're talking about reaching 3% of the Bay Area. Like, this is our first step towards that. This is our first step in saying, man, we want to go for it right now from the jump and saying, man, like, we want to get behind some of these initiatives to help really get into the community right away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm super excited. Javon, without giving away too much, let's get a little sneak peek of of what's coming this weekend. Uh, Yeah, so what's coming this weekend, um, I'll start it off by saying this. I'm going to say a phrase. Okay. And then you have to finish it. Okay. Okay, I like this. Give me a break. Give me a break. Break me off a piece of that. Sweet potato pie. <laughs> or I'm going to say Kit Kat bar. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Here yeah, we go. I was thinking about All a right. song. No, no, here we go. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. This is exactly where we're going. Yep. All right, now the next one. Nationwide is? On your side. I was going to say on your side. Well, that's a nice one. All right, here we go. McDonald's. McDonald's what? Da 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 da. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yeah. Like a good neighbor. Stay Farm is there. Won't you be my? Won't you be my? Won't you be my? Be my, be my baby. No. No. That's off. Neighbor. That's a- <laughs> neighbor. Neighbor. <laughs> that's really off. Okay, bye. <laughs> I wanted to see that version. I was gonna start looking that, 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 that was off. That was off. That was off. <laughs> like a little shimmy. Just. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. So. Mm-hmm. That's something called a mnemonic device mm. that's used in marketing for a jingle to help you remember something. Huh. So if people are knowing what Christians are for or always against and not necessarily knowing what we're for, mm-hmm. what is the jingle mm. that they have? What is, what is the jingle that they've heard? Mm. So if we're able to finish a sentence, if we're able to finish a little jingle, that has some marketing weight, some intentionality, what are they experiencing? And so Fred Rogers or Daniel Tiger, his contemporary today, Mm -hmm. about being a neighbor. And we always hear about, you know, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what do people think about us when we say like a good neighbor? Is Jesus there? Mm -hmm. Is Jesus' people there? Does Jesus really care? So we're really going to tap into Oh, so excited. Um, if you have any prayer requests this weekend, want to ask Javon or Aisha anything as well, you can text our team, 650-600-0402. Thank you both for being on. Yeah, absolutely. Aisha, thanks so much for Thank carving out some time. Thank you for having me. Javon, looking forward to this weekend. Yeah. Have a great week, everybody. Have a safe Halloween. We'll yes. see you soon. Bye. Peace. Bye. <laughs>